This is former National Security Advisor John Bolton telling you exactly what is about to happen next. Listen up. So I think among the many targets Israel should consider, this is the opportunity uh, to destroy I Iran's nuclear weapons program. Uh, and I hope President Biden is not trying to dissuade Prime Minister Netanyahu from doing that. Uh, and okay, so number one, Joe Biden is certainly not trying to discourage Netanyahu from doing that. If he was trying to discourage that, he would not be enabling the Israelis with weapons, funding, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance and acting as a goalie, as a goaltender, defending against the volley of missiles that is going to come Israel's way once they do retaliate. So no, uh, this whole facade of there being discourse amongst the upper echelons, be they Israeli or American, everybody is 110% aligned. The Israelis knew that when they attacked the Iranian consulate that this would be a provocative enough act that Iran would be compelled to respond directly by attacking Israel and this would provide Israel the license that they need to finally, once and for all, start a big war with Iran. Now even myself, uh, as <laughs> sensational and hyperbolic as I might be at times, I was astounded that they leapfrogged over Hezbollah in Lebanon and went right to Iran. Back when I made that prediction on January 30th that we would be in a war with Iran before the election, I say that in the first 10 seconds of the video, I thought that first they would have to drum up unrest and start a war with Lebanon or Hezbollah and that that would pull the entire region in and that eventually Iran would attack Israel. I was doubtful that Iran was going to attack Israel right up until the point that it happened, okay? Because it seemed almost as if the Israelis were just kind of talking this up to scare their population into accepting more uh, draconian style laws and that they did they were able to suppress protests and all the rest and bibi now has been uh, has realized that hey all we have to do is keep this war going and then the protesters who are organizing these protests will go along and they will suspend as they did over the weekend their activities almost like a self-imposed martial law so indeed uh, the israelis knew that this was going to happen the ultimate end goal as the chariots of fire exercises that were practiced, I think it was a couple years ago, among many other exercises that simulate attacking Iranian nuclear facilities. That is the end goal. John Bolton is effectively uh, the mouthpiece for the Israeli war hawks. And this idea that, you know, the Biden administration or that the Americans aren't going to enable this behavior, if that were true, they could easily pull certain funding they could say no we're not going to provide you with all these fighter jets that you're going to need in order to do it so this idea that israel is not going to respond i mean i'm hearing some pundits say that that is preposterous this is exactly what they want this is exactly what they need okay this is a golden opportunity because wouldn't you know it only 24 hours after something i, I would say the most historical event since the beginning of the Ukraine war, okay? And, and that's crazy because of course, in the last five years, we're just bombarded with these unprecedented events one after another. But what happened yesterday was, you know, historically unprecedented, Iran attacking Israel, not just with one missile, but with the largest volley of surface to surface missiles ever, okay? And there's already people who've become complacent and stricken with that good old normalcy bias, who think, oh, maybe nothing bad is gonna happen. You know, the Bitcoin whales dumped yesterday, and now they're already starting to buy back in because they think, okay, the Israeli war cabinet is gonna meet and mull this over for the next 24 hours, and they're probably not gonna respond. They're probably gonna leave it there. Now, understand uh, that this is the golden opportunity, okay? People are saying, oh, gas prices aren't going up, 
gas prices aren't going to go up right away. For one, that's a refinement issue. So even if oil prices were to shoot up immediately, that doesn't mean that gas prices are going to immediately shoot up overnight. Now they might if, you know, refineries start going offline and, you know, there starts to get a shooting match with the refineries in the Middle East. But uh, you need to understand that this is the golden opportunity to get prepped because everything is about to get more expensive. There's going to be this period of delay, and I, I, I sincerely can't believe that gold futures right now are only trading slightly above where they were yesterday. And I think oil futures are the same as of now. Let me see, yeah, oil futures are, are th these aren't futures, this is what oil's trading at right now. Crude oil is barely trading above what it was yesterday. Now, you can interpret that as, yeah, nothing is ever going to happen, right? And you can interpret that as everything is just fine and that the plan is for Israel to not respond. But I think that would be an incredibly foolish bet at this point in time. I mean, we are certainly risk off, to say the least, uh, and certainly, you know, not risk on, we'll say. But the war cabinet is about to meet in the next 24 hours. And I think that they are going to retaliate. And the problem is, is that the Iranians have already pledged that if the Israelis commit to a retaliation, that this strike is going to be tenfold greater than the last. Now, in terms of the actual damage what that was done, there's a lot of debate already about, well, did they actually, was this a successful campaign or not? We need to understand that the same playbook is being executed the one that uh, has been executed in Ukraine where they downplay the number of hits, where they talk about how incompetent the adversary is. They're talking about how, you know, half the missiles, which is complete and utter bullshit, fell into the ocean or didn't fire properly and on and on and on. The same stuff. Soon they're going to be talking about how the Iranians are running out of weapons, okay? So the same playbook and minimizing the losses. So even though we're seeing, I can't remember the exact number, but there was about 20 recorded hits, okay, of video footage that recorded direct hits, different strikes that were recorded. They're saying only seven missiles hit, even though uh, there was official reports that 15 targeted one air base as well as a intelligence facility in the Golan Heights, which apparently was very important. Now, without the help of the Americans, the Jordanians, the UK, and everybody else who partook in the defense, Israel's systems would be easily overwhelmed. And I think this is what the point that the Iranians were trying to make, that look, it took us 300 of our, you know, crappy drones that we fire anyways, because we know those are going to be shot down. They're going to eat up your air defense so we can get in these, these, uh, uh, cruise missiles and ICBMs and possibly, not ICBMs, but uh, ballistic missiles and uh, the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, hypersonic missiles potentially, although they didn't use any of those, they claim. You know, we can easily overwhelm your missile defense. And if we wanted to, we could fire a volley that was 10 times greater. So as I said yesterday, the fact that they've already successfully had hits, even though the Israelis are saying the damage is minimal. There's mixed reports of that. Uh, it's a sign that indeed, if they wanted to, they could ratchet this up a lot. And if, if Israel goes through with this counter-strike on the Iranian nuclear facilities, they're preparing a whole spectrum, a smorgasbord of possible retaliatory options they're claiming then we are going to see, I mean, this is already an escalation. Let's make no mistake. It's not about whether or not we're going to see an escalation. The escalation just happened. You know, the markets are completely manipulated and public opinion is very manipulated. Right now, they're playing on a psychological principle of learned helplessness with people in the markets that we've become so uh, fickle and uh, the, the biofeedback loop that we have with the media now, we've become so desensitized that there's this massive shock and uh, selling out right when something bad happens 
but if something bad doesn't happen for six or eight hours after that, everybody grows complacent once again. And because of FOMO, because we have a one-to-one, -one, and I think this wouldn't have happened like in World War II, where you had to kind of sit and think and mull things over and think more strategically, but because we have an immediate feedback loop with market watch and all of the stock tickers and the crypto tickers and the commodities tickers, because of that, we are basing our decisions on very short-term data sets and possible outcomes. So we're not thinking things through. This is going to escalate, okay? We said it was gonna escalate back when I made that prediction on January 30th, but I didn't believe that we would leapfrog. I didn't believe that we would leapfrog Lebanon. I can't believe that Iran attacked Israel last night. And there's already people who are uh, adapted to that new plateau of escalation like it's no big deal. And there's already people in the comment section saying, you know, see, nothing bad is gonna happen. Gas prices are still the same. Well, let's see what happens, okay? Let's see what happens. I hope, I hope, but because we know that Israel provoked the Iranians into doing this attack so to provide them justification to go and take out Iranians' nuclear facilities. How does this not escalate? Getting to the data for today, uh, the Israeli war cabinet is going to be deciding in the next 24 hours. They're saying by Monday, they're going to make a decision with respect to how they're going to respond. I don't know if they're gonna disclose that to the public. I don't see why you would, but this day and age, it's kind of a clown show, so you just never know. Spanning from potential strikes on Iran to refraining from military action altogether, they say, which is highly doubtful, will be a deliberated uh, upon in the upcoming war cabinet meeting. The Israeli president, Isaac Herzog, has said that this large-scale attack on Israel was a declaration of war. Well, I would say attacking the Iranian consulate was probably really the declaration of war, but really that's a subjective uh, demarcation line that you can draw in the sand at will. Now, the possible targets range from Iranian command and control to critical infrastructure to their nuclear facilities to military bases. It's hard to say exactly what's going to happen, but immediately during the war cabinet meeting, they approved the strikes and rumblings on uh, social media uh, initiated by Israeli Channel 14, which is a news uh, media agency there, which is typically quite reputable and ahead of the curve, said that an immediate response with strikes inside Iran was approved by a clear majority of the Israeli war cabinet, but canceled at the last minute after a phone call between Biden and Netanyahu. Now, here's the thing, guys. <sighs> Nose is running here. Um, does a war benefit the Biden administration? We have to really think about this. A small enough war? No, because most of Biden's voting base are not going to approve of any backing of the Israelis, at least not in the offensive sort. There's still enough padding there in the uh, progressive left to provide Israel the defense uh, that it needs, which of course, it eventually, look, defense is offense. If your defense enables a country to offend, then you are, you know, uh, essentially, what do they say? Uh, you're complicit in the hostilities, okay? But if there's a war big enough, then you potentially have a situation where not only uh, will, you know, the, the, the likelihood of an incumbent president uh, being reelected once again, increases because of course most presidents during wartime are re-elected it could even get so severe and so extreme that it may cause a postponement of the election now i personally think that would cause a civil war so i don't think that's going to happen but you could see something happen if biden's even going to be the guy i mean they could you know pull him out at the last minute and put somebody else in there who knows what they have planned but this could go both ways but what i'm trying to say is a war that's big enough would actually be to Biden's benefit. A war that's too small and not properly timed will not be to Biden's benefit, okay? So I think that if they're gonna do this, if Biden is definitely on board, and I don't believe for a second that if the, if the Americans truly were, and I say Americans, I'm talking about the upper echelons, not my American viewers that I love. And when I say America, I mean Canada because you guys are the boat, we're like, uh, we're tethered to your sinking ship, 
regardless of what our political differences might be. It's all the same. So the upper echelons, I don't think that they're disaligned at all. They're 110% aligned. It's just a matter of playing this whole good cop, bad cop role for the cameras. So we're about to see in the next 24 hours exactly what the course of action will be. But of course, the Israelis never notified anybody that they were going to attack the Iranian consulate. So don't expect them to tell you exactly what they're going to do next. It's likely going to be uh, more sabotage, you know, espionage, uh, stuff which is done under the radar, attacks, cyber attacks, things of that nature. But we will see something kinetic as well. I do believe there are some Western officials that expect that Israel will respond very quickly. Three officials also indicated, while at the same time indicating that they thought only 50% of Iran's missiles properly fired and that the rest misfired, they also think that Israel is going to uh, act independently, irrespectively of the advice of the White House. Now, in terms of the attack itself, you know, there's all kinds of commentary on the effectiveness of this attack. But again, just remember that throughout the Ukraine war, they've lied to us about how effective the Russian strikes have been. They told us, you know, they played the whole uh, Russians are idiots card and Russians are running out of weapons card and the Russians aren't hitting any of their targets card. And they're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to see the fog of war incredibly thick and eventually they're going to impose restrictions on people you know taking pictures of and posting videos of various attacks for national security purposes i do believe it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do that apparently right now in israel the flights out of the country are quite busy i you know i mean when you have a country that is full of dual citizens to other countries who can freely come and go as they please it's kind of a choice whether you have to be patriotic or not. It's not in some other countries like Ukraine. I mean, you can't leave. So people are going to be faced with that situation, knowing that the Netanyahu government is about to ramp this up and possibly go for broke. And let's not forget that they still have to deal with the Rafa invasion that has now been conveniently put on hold. They've called up another couple of brigades. Of course, there's still stuff escalating on the northern border so israel about is about to you know it's a powder keg that's about to be ignited and it is ignited make no mistake this is an escalation don't let anybody try to downplay for a second what has just happened here this is profoundly significant this has never before happened in history so just keep that in mind when you're you're doing your preparedness planning this week in fact i was talking to a friend the other day and i was I was kind of upset because I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm almost in this property that I'm supposed to be in. It's a rural property and uh, I'm not set up at all yet. And this happened too soon. You know, I'm, I'm, I want this to happen years from now. I don't want it to happen at all, but if it has to happen, I want to postpone it as long as possible. But here we are. It looks like, like every day that goes by from this point forward is a gift for you to prepare and this will be viewed as the golden opportunity right now where people are still stricken with this normalcy bias in spite of the fact that iran just attacked israel okay i mean three weeks ago this would be unthinkable three weeks ago e e even though i made that prediction on january 30th where i said that iran was going to attack Israel before, or not Iran was going to attack, but that we'd be in a war with Israel before, or Israel would be in a war with Iran before the election. I didn't necessarily know how the sequence of events would, would unfold. But, you know, here we are. It's happened. Okay, that's, th th there's, the only thing that has to happen now is Israel response, which they're going to respond. But this is a whole new precedent because what this is also saying is that now every time that Israel pushes Iran's buttons, they're going to respond in this way. And Israel is saying, well, we can't allow that to happen. We have to uh, do a counter strike. Well, if they do that, it, Iran has threatened to fire 1,000 missiles and drones. So 10 times more or less the, well, it was 300, a combined uh, 300 old drones, old rockets 
the Iranians are saying they're using all their old stuff. They're doing the same thing that they did with the Russians, but they have, uh, that the Russians did. But they do have, uh, they have said that they're going to uh, do a, an attack which was 10 times greater than this one should the Israelis respond, okay? According to the former cent central commander chief, Iran could not replicate last night's attack tonight. If they had to, Iran is relatively weaker than it was yesterday. So they got another Ben Hodges type character in there to make the public convince that Iran are a bunch of fools and that Israel, a country which is, what is it, like 36 times smaller in terms of geography, it is 10 times smaller in terms of its population, it is four times smaller in terms of its uh, gross domestic product, in terms of purchasing power parity, and I mean, on every metric, with the exception of the nuclear weapons and with the exception that the Americans ha are providing them defenses and uh, are on their side, you know, I mean, this is a very one-sided fight when you really look at it, with the, with the exception of nuclear weapons. Now, if we presume that you, Iran already has nuclear weapons, then that could be, you know, a game changer. And that means it's game over and it's lights out. And let's not forget that the amount of money that was spent just yesterday, people are only calculating the cost of the missile defense itself, which is over a billion dollars. You also have to, to factor in the cost of having all of that defense equipment, those warships, and you know all of the military, you have to pay all the military and all of the infrastructure that you build out and the maintenance and the uh, the you know just the diminishing of your systems having to use them over and over and to maintain them this all takes its toll this all all costs even more money so we're talking about billions of dollars that this one defensive effort to defend against 300 of these drones and missiles which probably cost the iranians you know a few million bucks and you also have to think about from here forward the cost to create another interceptor is only going to increase. So they may, they may have had uh, interceptors in stockpile uh, that they used to intercept these, this missile volley last night, but to produce those again is gonna cost way more than the one they just used because of inflation, because of the supply chain and all of that. So yeah, we're not in a good spot, strategically speaking, logistically speaking, not in a good spot at all. What else do we got here? Tehran is currently in the process of scrambling to stock up on food. There are lines at supermarkets and gas stations. Uh, I'm hearing from people that CBRN equipment is flying off the shelves. Of course, you can still get that at CanadianPreparedness.com. Pretty much anything you need for prepping, we have from freeze dryers to the highest powered flashlights to various types of weapons, uh, with the exception, of course, of firearms to food, to food storage, things like mylar, um, desiccant packets, uh, what do you call them, uh, oxygen absorbers, everything. We got it all, CBRN gear, gas masks, hazmat suits, Geiger counters. We have the best Geiger counter in the world made right here in Canada, in our city, in our warehouse, in fact, by our resident nuclear physicists. So go and get that stuff at uh, CanadianPreparedness.com because when the Israelis finally do mount their response, I think it's going to be big. And I think all this talk about whether or not they're gonna do it is just paying lip service and keeping the Iranians guessing, maybe sussing out uh, what the public opinion is going to be, but when Netanyahu realizes that his time in office is limited unless he retaliates. That's just unfortunately more incentive for them to start something. Another thing to consider is that this uh, launching of missiles allowed the Iranians to collect a lot of data on the missile defense systems of the Israelis and the Americans. Okay, so now they have a data set that they can leverage. Uh, the, they were firing missiles of all different types at different altitudes 
and now they've, they have a gauge of where the weak points are, what the capabilities are, and now they can course correct accordingly. Just like the Russians were able to ultimately course correct. And again, when you are, uh, we, we have to view this in a different way because most people are just seeing, well, what targets did they hit? Hitting an interceptor that costs 10 to 20 times the amount is a hit, okay? So when the Iranians fire a Shahid drone and it costs the Israelis 20 times the amount to take out that drone, that's a hit because they just wasted a lot more money and resources than the Iranians did. If the Iranians tomorrow sent over 1,000 Shahid drones and they all got shot down, you would hear on the news networks, oh, it's a victory, and the incompetent uh, Iranians unfortunately suffered defeat at the hands of the Israeli superior missile defense. But did they? Did they really, from a logistical strategic point of view? No, it was a complete loss. So it's a hit. So we need to understand missile defense just because you intercept a missile, you may, you may prevent it from hitting a higher value target, but maybe, you know, that Shahid drone would have hit a building that only cost a hundred, couple hundred thousand dollars, but you just wasted a half a million dollar interceptor on it. So this is how we need to understand the calculus of war. But from the Western point of view, we want Pyrrhic victories. And while it is a successful feat to be able to intercept something and prevent uh, something from hitting, and it also acts as a bit of a deterrent, it's not a complete victory, especially if it costs you more to do it than the guy who was launching the drone or the missile in the first place. So something to think about, guys, I would strongly encourage you, stock up while you can, because this is only going to increase in terms of its severity and intensity. And, uh, you know, I'm surprised. I'm honestly surprised. Well, I'm not surprised because, you know, this is the nature of the manipulated markets and manipulated minds of the masses that we're currently in, that you could have something happen just 24 hours ago, not even 24 hours ago, and already people are adapted and, and acclimated to it and it's no big deal anymore and everything is just gonna be fine. I assure you that the people who provoked this whole thing in the first place have a plan, they know it's not gonna be fine, and uh, yeah, let's just see. Time will tell, but I'm 99% certain that shit's gonna go sideways even more than it is now, and that's not a hard prediction to make, but for some people, some people require convincing. You can lead people to information, but you cannot make them think. Thanks for the support, guys. Go check out CanadianPreparedness.com. Get the gear while the getting's good.